I was going to interview Richard Gere at the Pretty Woman Hotel. Uh, and something really weird happened. Hi, Hi and welcome to Vossum Talk. I'm Chastity Flo. I am a journalist and entertainment reporter. I've been working in Hollywood for many, many years. And this is a new series that I started um, a couple of months ago. Um, where I take you a little bit behind the scenes to see what my job is like as a reporter and what it's like basically to interview celebrities. So lately I've been getting kind of a lot of attention for my bad interviews, um, which is kind of surreal to me. And especially uh, what happened this week when I ended up on the cover of New York Times. Um, it was a cover on the digital version. Uh, I was interviewed by them earlier this week, but I thought it was going to be a little thing in, in the style section. But then my friend texted me, she's like, you're on the cover of New York Times. So that's pretty amazing. And I think it's quite surreal <laughs> that my worst interviews have um, landed me a cover on New York Times. So I think uh, that should be a reminder to everyone that if you really screw up or really like you know, feel like you're not doing a great job, you know, great things can come from that. And I'm an example from that. I've talked about before how a bad interview that I couldn't sell ended me putting that interview on YouTube, which started my whole thing on YouTube. And now I have, I think almost 100 million views on my interviews. So even though there's been a lot of focus on my bad interviews because I've been sharing them, there's a lot of really good ones that I'm really happy with as well that are out there. And I'm going to talk about those too. Um, so please stay tuned and thank you for everyone who's already subscribed. And if you haven't yet, I would really appreciate it if you do. Um, and also about all your amazing comments. I'm going to answer a few of them in this episode. I'm also going to share with you a pretty cool experience I had with an actor that I was, I was completely unprepared with what was going to happen. Um, when I was going to interview Richard Gere at the Pretty Woman Hotel, uh, and something really weird happened. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going for the Pretty Woman experience. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're, you're having it right now. Anyways, more about that a little bit later. First, I wanted to answer a few of your questions. There's been a few people who asked me how I ended up in this job, and I have to say it was really kind of a coincidence. I started off as a teacher in Norway, then I moved to London and I worked for three years in London in sales. Then I went traveling. Uh, I brought a, a ticket to China and I brought a backpack with me and I traveled for seven months by myself in Southeast Asia. Then I went to Central America and I got, got back from there and I was like, hmm, I like writing. I did actually start writing a little bit before I went on that trip. So I did like travel stories while I was traveling, which was kind of cool. And it always gave me some kind of mission with every place that I visited that I could write a story from there. Um, but then I was like, I, I really want to get into journalism. So I went to New York to visit a friend of mine and I was like, this city is the coolest in the world. I want to live here. And as I said before, I watched so much Sex and the City and I was like, hey, I want this kind of life. It's such a cool place. And um, I, can, I, I wanted to find out if really if I could live there. And so I found out I could get a press visa and then I packed my bags in 2007 and I got a one-way ticket. And then I moved to a tiny little rotten place in Lower East Side where I remember waking up at six o'clock in the morning by the garbage truck passing by and I could hear the screams from the rats when they threw the garbage bins into the garbage car. It was really horrific, uh, but I loved it. I had mice in my room, cockroaches in the kitchen, you know, that all of that is like the life of in New York and it's just like a part of the charm, I guess. I feel like a lot of people uh, think that interviewing celebrities is like the dream job and um, that's why I wanted to share with you. I, I did interview some of my colleagues, journalist colleagues, a few years ago um, because I was working on another project and I wanted to see, you know, to interview them about what they think about this job. And it was quite interesting what they said. Just look at this. Well, but in general, I think journalists are like, um, and especially when we're here in Cancun together in one ho hotel, it feels like we're in this psychiatric institution. 
you know, with all mental people, people who hardly know how to communicate, who drink a lot, most of them are alcoholic, uh, alcoholics, um, most of them have no relationships at all, very lonely people, and they watch all these romantic movies and they have no idea what it is in real life. No, I think film journalists are not the regular people that, that no. It's actually a very fun job uh, for someone, especially for someone who doesn't really have a family, which isn't the case with me anymore. <laughs> but um, some people, I mean, most of the people that I uh, come across uh, tell me that this is a dream job. For most uh, film journalists, uh, the freebies and the free food are the most important things in life. I think that drives them. That, that, I mean, if you ask them what drives you in life, it's not the passion for film, but it's the free food and the freebies. Yeah, I need to stay a little bit further away from you guys. <laughs> you need to stand there. Yeah, did you, what did you ask the, the talents about today? Jack Black, look in my eyes. Look in my eyes. Why are you so fat? Uh, I know I ask it nothing because my English is terrible. I'm what? only here because they're here. <laughs> it's quite funny the whole kind of environment amongst journalists because you keep seeing the same people over and over again around the world and there's so many different personalities and I was actually visiting, I was a guest at a podcast this week as well and someone asked me, you know, if, uh, if it's competitive amongst journalists and I would say it's very competitive. Um, everyone wants to have you know the best interview and everyone there's so many people just bragging all the time about oh he was so good to me and he was so nice to me and I got the best interview and it's not always true uh, but anyways uh, a lot of people are like that there's a lot of journalists too with very big egos and I think it's it's probably not very easy to get into this now because um, things have changed a lot uh, I was also a guest at BBC Radio this week and the, one of the hosts there, she said that we don't accept these junkets anymore, we want to do our own interviews. And of course when you're BBC it's different, so they would get, they would bring the talent to their own room and do a 20 minute interview. Okay, as I said, I wanted to share uh, a memorable interview with you guys. So this happened a few years ago, I was going to interview Richard Gere and it was at the Pretty Woman Hotel. Uh, I'm sure you guys have seen some of the scenes from there. If you've seen the movie, I was a huge fan of it back in the 90s. Oh! <laughs> Today, they would never be able to make that movie because it's not very politically correct. But uh, Richard Gere is picking up a prostitute and that's Julia Roberts. And then they fall in love. It's a very <laughs> unrealistic story, I would say. But... You know, it's got that kind of 90s vibe about it. It's very cute. And um, of course, I was super excited that I was going to meet the Richard Gere in that hotel. It's called the Beverly Wilshire. And it's at Rodeo Drive, you know, in that area, the very luxurious area in Beverly Hills. And so I got there in the morning and I was like, oh my God, I can't wait to go down memory lane with him and talk about, you know, how amazing it is for him to be back here. But then this happened. Which is pretty amazing. I didn't. I've never been to this hotel before. What does it make you feel? Well, you know, I I don't think I've ever stayed here before, and I realized when I was checking in here too that I don't think I've ever been here. Really? No. And I I've had people over the years tell me, oh yeah, we stayed in the Pretty Woman Suite at the Beverly Wilshire, and I said we didn't shoot there, <laughs> which <laughs> really? we didn't. But they had apparently four or five suites that they called they would rent out as the Pretty Woman Suite. And now they call it the Pretty Woman Experience. So, anyhow, enough of that. Norman. Why? This is much more. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going for the Pretty Woman Experience. <laughs> yes, you're having it right now. How many people have had a chance to be with Richard Gere at the Wilshire, at the Beverly Wilshire? I don't know. Not that many, probably. Well, I know of one. The Julia. But that wasn't here. So there is no suite? There is no Pretty Woman suite? No. That bathtub no, isn't that, upstairs? No, no. That was a set. <laughs> it was a built set. And most of the stuff that we did that was like really hotel stuff was at an abandoned hotel. I think it was the Ambassador it was called. Was that the name of it? Oh, you're too young. <laughs> you don't know. You're like, you know this. <laughs> the one on Wilshire? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. The yeah. Ambassador, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, Richard is real. 
Richard is real. That's Sometimes. good. So you were real. Sometimes. Okay, so that's a reminder for everyone who thinks that they had the Julia Roberts experience or the Pretty Woman experience. It's not real. I'm so sorry if you paid a lot of money to stay at the Beverly Wilshire um, because there is no Pretty Woman suite. How devastating is that? Um, so that's the thing in Hollywood. You never know what's real. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope I see you in the next one. Please leave a comment below if there's anything you want me to talk about or if there's something you don't want me to talk about. <laughs> I'll do my best. And uh, thanks again, everyone, for being so cool. I love all your comments. I read them all. And um, yeah, I hope I see you in the next one. Bye.